What up tubers, Bunny here and welcome back to Geo Flight Simulator. So if you've been with me for the past four years, you've probably known that I have made plenty of Geo Flight Simulators before. But actually over the past spring, I just came up with an idea to make a bunch of like Geo Flight Simulator videos where I'm basically explaining stuff, this, that, and the other thing. Kind of like how the YouTuber YBR used to do those kinds of BMG videos, if you've ever heard of YBR. Anyway, so I'm going to start by just doing an overview video of GeoFlight Simulator. So if you're new to GeoFlight Simulator, basically what it is, is a free online flight simulator. You don't even need to download anything, you just have to go, just like... Google search GOFS, and the first link that'll pop up is GOFS.com. From there, you get a screen where uh, you get a screen where you can uh, go ahead and uh, get a brief overview from Xavier, the developer of this game. And then you can click on the fly button and you can fly aircraft like this Cessna 172 that you see right here. This is not the default aircraft that you spawn in, but I'll get to that at another time. Yeah, like I said, no download required. As long as you've got an internet browser and you're trying to play this on your computer, you're good to go. Okay. So, yeah, I've got this aircraft. I'm going to go right ahead and uh, say it. There are dozens of aircraft to choose from. So you see the selection right here with all the icons for the various aircraft. All of these were added to the game by the developer of GOFS himself, Xavier Tassin. That's his name. Uh... So yeah, there's like, I think, over 20 aircraft that you can choose from. And that does not even include the fact that some of these aircraft you can uh, choose different skins for. Like, this 737, look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different skins you can choose for the 737. Or the A380, you can choose 3 different libraries. That's what they're called, libraries. So, yeah, they're... You've got plenty of aircraft to choose from just from what Xavier offers you. Then there's community contributions. Open those up and oh my golly, you get dozens more aircraft to choose from. My golly. 787s. There's a 747. You get a bit few more variants of 737s. You've got turboprops. You've got various fighter aircraft. You even have spaceships in this game, huh? You want to try flying to space in a flight simulator? Why not? Do it! Because, huh, you see right here, Starship SN5. Now, I'm just gonna tell you that, sadly, there used to be a space shuttle that you could fly in this game. But it, it has since been removed. Uh, there's even an airship that you can fly, the Lockheed Martin P-791. So yeah, there are plenty of community contributions to choose from, and the list continues to grow. Like, I'm not saying every week this list grows, but it does get updated quite often. You get all these cool aircraft, and okay. So anyway, that takes care of aircraft. Why don't we get to flying? Oh wait, well, first, first, before we get to flying, I should probably uh, go over some of the controls for this thing. So if you go into this options tab right here, or you can just press the O key. Uh, up top is the controls. There you can choose three different control devices to choose from. So... You could choose the mouse, so okay, I just went ahead and did mouse, so I'm just going to move my mouse about, so you can see, let's see, you can see the elevator going up and down as I 
pull back and forth on the mouse. Uh, and if I move left to right, you can see the ailerons and the, uh, what is my scroll wheel doing? Okay. Uh, the ailerons and rudder are moving about. Uh, so basically you can use your mouse like a joystick. Now I'm not a fan of that setting. So I'm just going to go back to the keyboard. The keyboard is actually my favorite uh, control device configuration. Actually, for a second, I'm going to go over the joystick just to show you that. But if you're going to use a joystick, why not use an actual joystick controller, right? So these are the settings here. Now, I'm going to be honest, I have not used those settings at all. I don't have the proper controller for that. So anyway, yes. I've got the keyboard configuration enabled. Uh, I have mix roll yaw turned off. Now let me turn that on for just a sec so I can show you. So if I roll left or attempt to roll left, you can see the rudder has also turned left. And if I go to roll right, you can see the rudder is also turning right. So that's it. I usually keep that off. So anyway, I could go over the controls for the uh, uh, the keyboard controls, but I'm not going to. You feel free to uh, play around with those and get them set to your preferences. So another bit of controls that you can uh, deal with in this game are there is a pause, unpause button. So, actually, let me unpause it for a sec. You'll notice the uh, propeller spinning around right there. If I pause it, boom. The propeller has stopped rotating right now. So, I'll unpause it. A better example of the pause, unpause is probably in the air. So, you know what? Why don't I just get to the air? Okay, actually, first. Okay, last thing, and then I'm going to take off. So, there's also this mute-unmute sound button. So, I'm going to enable the sound for just a moment. Uh, warning, this might be a little loud. There we go. So now you hear the propeller of my Sofa 172. In fact, now that I'm all set, I'm going to enable some claps. And let's get to flying! So, do that. Uh, you take the engine to full throttle. Oh, I better release the parking brake. And, yeah, you set your engine to full throttle, and you just pull up enough speed so that you can actually uh, rotate and take off. And I'm going to turn the sound off for a second. Whoa, what am I doing? Uh, yeah, aircraft can do that sometimes. Uh, I think it's getting battered around by the wind. Yeah, you see this indicator right here that shows this arrow and a six knots? That's just telling me that... Okay, okay. I gained enough speed, so I pulled up. So, anyway, that indicator just tells me uh, my wind speed in this immediate environment. I'll get to that in a moment, but first, uh, let me explain the uh, flying tidbit. Okay, so I'm airborne. I'm airborne. So, in case you didn't hear what I said in the past 30 seconds, what you do is you set your engine to full throttle, you build up enough speed rolling along the runway, and then you pull back slightly on the, uh, whether you're using a keyboard or a joystick, basically you're pulling up so that you can uh, actually get airborne. And that's basically... And then you just use the controls to uh, fly around. So yeah, I'm banking right right now. All right, all right. I gotta do a barrel roll. I'm gonna do a barrel roll, you guys. So yeah, <laughs> this is that is not a safe maneuver to be executing in an airplane like this. Cessna 172 is not really built for doing stunts like that. Nevertheless, actually flying upside down is a thing that you can accomplish in Geoflight Simulator. It's not the most realistic thing in the world, but it can be done. And by golly, I have done it plenty of times before. Phew. 
And always bring your water bottle while you're flying. Uh, not really, but especially while you're talking. Uh, let's see. So that takes care of aircraft, controls. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, the ground, the ground. So it looks a little blurry, doesn't it? Yeah, it is kind of a, a little bit crappy, I will admit. Uh, that's... That is actually a graphic setting in Geoflight Simulator. When you open up the game for the first time, uh, you get what is called a standard definition uh, ground render. <clears throat> Basically, that uh, gives you uh, one pixel for every 10 meters or approximately 33 feet. So, like, every 33 feet is a new pixel, so... Yeah, like I said, it looks kind of crappy when you're close to the ground like that. But let me uh, get up into the air a little bit. Like, if I get to, like, a few thousand feet altitude, it should look better. Anyway, while I'm getting up to those altitudes, you'll notice these little gauges right here. So this one right here is your speedometer. And it measures your speed, it actually measures your airspeed. So it doesn't measure your speed relative to the ground. So keep that in mind. Like, you see the wind indicator right there, 6 knots. So, like, if I had, say, a headwind of 40 knots, and I was rolling forward at a ground speed of 40 knots, then this speedometer would say that I'm actually going some 80 knots. Uh, this is your uh, nav ball. Basically what this blue and orange ball does is that it informs you of your orientation in pitch and yaw, or not yaw, roll. So you see how it's angled like this. Now let me level off. Watch the nav ball. You see how it leveled off like that? Okay, so it does that. Now if I pull up, you'll notice that the blue side go takes over the uh, screen. But if I push down, now the orange side is going to take over. So yeah, it basically tells you what's your pitch, what's your roll. This right here is your compass. Need I explain more? Uh, this gauge here... You'll notice it goes down and up as I increase my altitude, decrease it. This is my vertical speed indicator. So like if I get gentle, so it's right now it's reading that I'm descending between 0 and 500 feet a minute. Uh, so yeah, it basically tells you how fast you're going up or down. This is your altimeter. This tells you uh, how high up you are. In feet. So right now, reading the dial, I am 4,400 feet up. I'm going toward 4,500. And boom, I'm 4,500 feet up. This lawn handle indicates your single feet. Actually, it's like down to like 10 feet. I'm able to measure with that precision. Okay, I'm at 4,600 feet now. This little hand indicates in uh, thousands of feet. So like, okay, so with the big hand, it would be like reading 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. With the little hand, you're reading 0, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. And then you see this long skinny hand right here that goes all the way to the edge. This reads your altitude in tens of thousands of feet. It's so like 0, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. That. Okay, and then the last thing to note is this gauge right here. So that indicates your engine power. So right now I have it at full throttle, and it tells you, like, your RPM, but really it's good for indicating, like, um, how much engine power you are applying. So... I like, it's more easily noticed in jet aircraft that use actually a different uh, engine power 
dial. Excuse me. So, like, if I cut to 50% throttle, you notice the needle just uh, dropped to here. So, yeah, now I'm at 50% throttle. All right, I'm going to throttle back up to 100%. And, okay, I'm now about nearly a mile. I'm about a mile up now. So, this is how this town looks from a mile up with the graphics. It still does not look the best. I will agree. But, but at least it does look, okay, we just went through a cloud. Okay, we're kind of going through a cloud. It looks a little bit better when you're high up. So anyway, yeah, it's going, this was going back to the graphics, so standard definition. Uh, there is also a high definition setting that you can actually buy for like some 11 bucks a year. But basically that gives you a sub meter ground resolution. And actually a good example of seeing how that looks is if you go back to my very first Geoflight Simulator video. I'm posting a card right up in the corner right now. That will take you to my very first Geoflight Simulator video. You can see how the high definition graphics looks by watching that. And pay no mind to some of the other on-screen stuff like the ads and whatnot because some of that stuff is a little dated because that video was actually recorded, like I said, four years ago. So back in 2018. So... Standard definition gives you these poor textures, but you see that the runway has a pretty good texture. Well, actually, that airport right there has two runways. It has that mile long runway you see here, but then it has a shorter runway, which you're not able to see quite as well. Let me turn and head over that way. Ugh. Okay. All right, so, yeah, you can kind of see that runway, but not really. Uh, basically, what the deal is, is in standard definition, for runways that are longer than 5,000 feet long, the game adds this runway texture so that there still is a visible runway that you can take off and land from to help make takeoffs and landings a lot easier. Uh, the exception, the sole exception to the rule that runways shorter than 5,000 feet don't get the texture is some airport out in the Caribbean. I think it's called Saba. I can't recall its exact name off the top of my head, but it's like the airport with the shortest runway in the world at only like 1,200 feet. That runway does have a texture. However, the mountains kind of make the terrain a little awkward near that uh, runway. So, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, yes! Would you like to see me crash and die? Well, then, by all means, let's do it. All right! Boys, yeah! Now this is one of the things I like doing in Geo Flight Simulator. I just like doing reckless uh, stuff like this, and yeah, I'm going like, oh boy, yeah, I'm gonna be crashing at like 250 knots. I'm dead. See you guys. Oh, but wait, I'm not dead. You saw how I survived that crash. Well, unless. This uh, certain setting, detect crashes, is on. Unless that setting is on, my airplane is invincible. So let me try crashing again. So let me do a basic loop-de-loop, -loop and let's just go into this nose dive. See you guys. Oh, so you see, I just crashed. It it darkens. I'm told you crashed. You might have saw a little smoke. So let me go ahead and reset. And oh, let's uh, cut the engine. So 
that's what that setting does. Uh, some aircraft, you actually cannot fly if you have crash detection enabled. So I'm actually going to turn that setting off for now. And actually, as long as I reset my fly, why don't I get into a new aircraft? What do I feel like? I'm thinking I'm going to go into a 737, and I feel like flying United. So, let's get into this aircraft. So, okay. It spawns. Right now it's showing the livery for Royal Dutch Airways. Airlines, Airways. Oh, Airlines. Okay, I'm sorry. So, this is actually the default skin for the 737. It has been that way for years. Okay. There we go. Now it's showing the new skin. Basically, if you're choosing an aircraft with a different skin than the default, it spawns you up starting with the default skin, but then the skin that you chose will eventually uh, render. So here I am. I'm flying United, and now you see there are some new uh, things. So you have this new air speedometer. Which instead of reading from 0 to 200 knots, will now read from 0 to 500 knots. Uh, this nav ball looks a lot more advanced. Uh, your vertical speed indicator will now read your ascent or descent up to 6,000 feet per minute. And you'll notice this new engine power indicator. So right now it shows 10%. This is idle. This is uh, what happens when you, uh, when you uh, cut the engines. It just goes to idle. If you turn the engine off, uh, it just takes you to 0%. Okay. So, okay, I guess it did. Uh, so, yeah, 0% indicates off. Now my plane has to start its engines back up. And actually, before I do anything else, I just realized I never mentioned the uh, throttle controls for this aircraft. So, if you want to cut the engines all together, that is, uh, you hit the zero key. And that will take you to uh, 10%. From there, the keys 1 through 9 will take you up in increments of 10%. So, 1 will get you to 20%. 2 will put you at 30%, 3 is 40, 40%, or I'm sorry, key 4 takes you to 50% throttle, and so on and so forth until you get to key number 9, which takes you all the way to 100%, and if I'm going to commit to flight, I really ought to uh, enable flaps, so, alright, so, yeah, what you do, like I said, you build up speed, and then you take off, you rotate. Okay, so there we go. So, again, you're seeing the speedometer indicating my airspeed. I'm approaching 175 knots. So, let's see. Multiplayer. Yes, uh, you see that uh, weird letter combination out there in the distance? The one that reads ENY4150. Yes, that indicates another pilot that is playing this flight simulator as I record this. So actually, I need to mention another uh, feature of this game. This is the nav map. Okay, so there you go. You see my location right now. Uh, a town in eastern Wisconsin called Fond du Lac. Oh, I better uh, pitch down a little bit. I'm going to, my nose is too hot. So, okay, okay. You see that blue airplane right there? Uh, that is an airplane. That is another uh, user who's, uh, another user who, oh wait, there's another plane nearby. Ooh. Let me go over to that guy. So anyway, here's your nav map. It tells you where you are on the planet as you're flying. This yellow, this golden airplane indicates you. Uh, the blue airplane indicates another player. 
And you notice you get their telemetry readings. <clears throat> uh, also, if you right click, you get a choice to go to that specific location, whether on the ground or a certain amount of feet up. Or you could click on these markers, and these markers are supposed to be at the ends of these runways. It gets a little glitchy in multiplayer. But blue indicates runways longer than 5,000 feet. Yellow indicates runways shorter than 5,000 feet. But if you click on one of these markers, it gives you the option to take off from that runway, fly by that runway, or approach that runway. I'll explore those in a moment, but anyway... I'm gonna get this other player that's over here. Is that a bunch of zeros? Yes, it is. That's a bunch of zeros. Unknown aircraft. Uh, unless this is one of those, uh, what is it called? ADSB traffic. Yes. I'm gonna go into the multiplayer tab right now. So, you can enable multiplayer, or you can disable it, which would then take you to a uh, single player, where basically the world is yours to fly around. There's show community contributed 3D models. This setting allows you to uh, access various, uh, the, the community contributed aircraft. That's the setting that you choose to access those vehicles. ADSB commercial traffic. Now, what is that? Basically, that is aircraft that are generated into the flight simulator based on data acquired from real life aircraft. So, like if there's a, let's say, a 737 flying over your town right now, if you load up Geo Flight Simulator, you might actually be able to. Uh, check out that uh, you might actually be able to see that aircraft in the flight simulator. And now I'm approaching this airplane and it seems to be unknown. Oh my! Okay, slow down, slow down! Whoa! Whoa! Hey! I almost crashed into that thing! Hey! I'd yell at it to watch where it's going, but I'm the one who's at fault. I wonder, can I slow down and uh, possibly let that thing catch back up to me? Though I really do need to be careful if I try that because I am about to stall. I'm beneath 150 knots. Uh, okay, you see that stall indicator right there. So I better actually... Uh, uh-oh, whoa, whoa, okay, whoa, 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 okay, so, aircraft can get a little squirrely to control when you're beginning to stall, so you really have to be careful about that. Whoa, I, I can't, okay, steady as she goes, steady as she goes, okay, uh, level off, whoa, okay, uh, I think if I up my power a little bit, here we go! I can follow this aircraft. We're good. We're good. Yeah, okay. So, I'm following this aircraft, which disappeared randomly. I'm going to give it a second, because sometimes uh, it will uh, reappear. I was having that go on the other day when I was uh, playing around in multiplayer. And he doesn't seem to be uh, reappearing. So maybe I just have to uh, say adios to that. Where am I anyway? Uh, Keel. Keel, Wisconsin. Okay, so that's where I'm flying. Uh, so let's see. That's the multiplayer. Oh, there was another option that you probably show or saw. Enable text chat. This is not recommended if you are less than 13 years of age because, well... I was just, uh, like I said, I was playing around in multiplayer the other day, and I was encountering some chats that included some highly suggestive dialogue. So, so not recommended unless you are uh, over 13 years of age. So, nah. 
for that, you'd have to proceed with caution. Let's see. I had mentioned the uh, standard definition of the globe before. If I go back into options, if I go into graphics, you can actually get some options for how your game looks. So this is a general uh, quality level thing. If I check that down all the way, you can see ugh, it kind of looks a little ugly now. So let me turn it back to three. And this is usually where I keep it at. There's also a color enhancement. So, okay, I just dropped it. This is how it looks. Jack it up. Here's how it looks. I'll send it back to point eight and yeah, basically that's that. You can also uh, tweak around the uh, quality levels if you're interested. I'm not going to go into that detail. Oh yes, water effect and contrails. Now contrails is something you don't get unless you're flying at 30,000 feet. So let me go to 30,000 feet, uh, jack the throttle up, let's open her up, and there, there, you see it? Those are contrails right there. So, yeah, basically adding to the realism. Now, the water effects. Let me uh, go over here, just above this lake right here, and I'm now just a few hundred feet above the water. So if water effect enabled, and usually this thing is disabled, uh, if water effect enabled, basically it lets you splash down in the water. Observe. Yeah, I kind of splashed down hard right there. I think I even kind of turned a little bit. Whoops. So anyway, that's what it does. Uh, if you have this setting off, the lake just acts like another hunk of ground. So I'm going to reset. This is another button that you can do. You can uh, use this button to reset your flight to wherever. Uh, there's also a replay button. So let me uh, reenact this splashdown right here. Oh, a little harder than last time, but eh, it still landed. Now, if I do press this button, which is watch recorded flight. This is basically an instant replay of the flight that I just did. Now, if your flight is longer than five minutes, this thing only records those last five minutes. So that's that. Uh, that's that thing. Ah, yes. Environment. Let me go over here. You can control the weather. You are Mother Nature. Watch me as I turn this place tonight. There. Now it is, uh, what is 2006 in the basic AM PM clock scheme? Uh, that is 8.06 PM. So let me, uh, back it up a little bit. Where's the sun? There's the sun right there. You can see I can change the time of day and there you go. There's your sun. So I'm going to switch this thing back to noon. This is when lighting is best. Weather. You can also uh, choose what... I'm going to go back to this airport right here. All right. Fine. I'm back at the airport. So weather. So if I set it to zero, now you've got a nice clear day. No clouds in the sky. Uh... If I slowly enable weather more and more, you see more clouds are forming. You get a wind going on. Uh, I don't know if you can see a, the wind in the carry. You might be able to see it all right right now. But then once you get to 50, it's all cloudy. Whoa! Okay. Now it's raining. And the rain just keeps coming. And if I worsen the weather quality... The rain gets even harder and harder. Now you've got this intense storm right here with like super high winds, like yeah, 30 knots. This is an unideal uh, weather quality to be uh, flying in. Oh, and also you can change what time of year it is. It can be summer, 
fall, winter. I'm going to go with spring for right now. And is it just me or... Is, okay, I'm, I'm turning this thing back to... Hey! The weather's propelled my aircraft forward. Okay. And then there's also an advanced setting where you can uh, tweak around with the weather however you want. That's that. You know what, as long as I'm rolling, let's go ahead and just take off and get out of here. So, let's see what else. What else? Locations. Yes. You can fly just about anywhere you want on the planet. Uh, so, like I said, you saw how you can use the nav map to choose a place to go to. But what about other locations? Well... You can open up locations, and you get a list where you can choose an airport to go to at the click of a button. So now, boom! I'm no longer in in cold Wisconsin. I'm now at some runway over in Miami, Florida. So there we go. I'm in nice sunny Florida, and I'm surrounded by foods. Now, foods are basically online players that haven't logged in such as they got themselves a call sign. Like you see right here. Sierra Bravo 717 is my call sign. Uh, if you want to add a call sign while you're in dual FS multiplayer, you just sign in using either your Facebook or Google account. And then you can choose whatever uh, call sign you want, and from there you can fly. You also need to log in that way if you want to enable chat. Let's see. So you can choose to spawn at any airport like that. Or you can use that to spawn yourself on the deck of an aircraft carrier. That's right. There is an aircraft carrier in Geoflight Simulator. You see those arresting cables right there? They actually work. I'm going to cover the carrier in another video for another time, probably sometime soon, if not even the next video. But for right now, let's keep going. Let's see. Okay, there is one last thing for me to mention. So if I go over to GeoFS's front page, so this is actually what it looks like. This is what you see. All this stuff. Basically, a bunch of stuff that Xavier will explain in just a few moments, what I've been explaining for the past 40 minutes. But over here, you see this button that says Fly 3.0 Beta. This is what I want to check out. This is what I want to show you to wrap things up for today's video. Okay, so here we are in GeoFS 3.0 Beta. So this is actually a new version that Xavier is working on for this game. Uh, it's been in beta for a little while, but there are some interesting features that are worth mentioning in this video. So I start out here on the aircraft carrier, and actually I'm going to get into another aircraft because this vehicle is not going to be good for getting off of this carrier. Let me choose one of the uh, community contributions. I think I'm going to go with this A-10. So, it'll take a moment for this thing to spawn up. But, you are going to see a pretty badass looking airplane. Uh, if you don't know what an A-10 is, it's basically a flying tank. Hey, don't hit me, Foo. You're going to kill me. You're going to kill me. Oh, wait. That's right. I'm the invisible man. That's right. Uh... The carrier is kind of a playground for many GOFS users, and watch it, boo. They're gonna hit me again. Oh! You hit me! Where were you raised? A barn? Uh, probably in the, uh, mausoleum. Because he's dead now. Ah! I gotta get it out of here. So, yeah, let, let's just get out of here. I'm, I'm out of here. Bye, folks. Okay, actually, you know what? I need to enable flash because I'm going to need all the lift that I can get. All right. Take off. Take off. <gasps> okay. <laughs> See? 
close call right there. If I had tried taking off with what little space I had available, I would not have made it. <laughs> but lucky for me, I'll get to fly another day. Woohoo! Okay, so actually, first thing right off the bat, you see waves going on right there over the ocean. Now, you might think that just because I'm flying over the ocean, but actually, this is a feature that I have noticed being exclusive to the 3.0 version. Let's see. Skies are pretty clear. Let me uh, get some weather going on here. So, if I turn it up, you see the clouds? Yes. I just turned settings up to... Oh, no! Okay. So, this is a good time for me to mention. If you're going to play GeoFS 3.0, beware, because it is not the most stable version. Uh, yeah. I'm going to need to see if I can uh, refresh this thing. So, give me a sec. All right, so I just reloaded the page and I got out of the San Francisco area because that does tend to be quite a buggy area to try to be playing around in 3.0. Let's see, oh, I better be careful because there's aircraft flying around. So I got into another aircraft as well, one of Xavier's aircraft, in hopes of trying to uh, keep a ward off the uh, glitch that just happened as well. So this is the Alpha Jet. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off in this thing. Actually, this aircraft is kind of unique. I'm going to go into more detail about it later, but watch. 100 knots, and I'm airborne. I'm airborne. I didn't even need to press the elevator at all. Let's see. Bring down the flaps, and okay. So I'm in Reno right now. I just went to Reno because I want to show you Another uh, unique feature of... This is an Easter egg that is actually unique to 3.0. A race course. So there's one tower. There's gate one. Alright. And the racers are going through gates two, three. Alrighty. Uh, how fast can I go? Hello. Can you go? Hello. Can you go? Hello. Can you go? Uh... Pretty low if you want me to uh, crash and die, of course, which isn't what I want to do. So, you see these clouds? They have a much more realistic shape to them. They are, in general, a lot more beautiful. In fact, I think that's an option somewhere. I think over in graphics, yes, volumetric clouds. There's also advanced atmosphere. That's another option in 3.0. And vegetation. You only get vegetation in GeoFS 3.0. In fact, you can see it right there in the distance. I'm going to fly to get closer to it. But you're going to see that there are trees growing. Um, <clears throat> I see trees of green. Red roses too. I see them bloom. For me and for you. I can't do it. I think I... Got it for like the first line or so, and then I'm just kind of butchering it. But anyway, yes, I see trees of green. <coughs> oh, I shouldn't have tried that Louis Armstrong imitation. Now my throat's gonna hate me. So yeah, trees, trees, trees everywhere, and now they're despawning for whatever reason. Oh, the clouds clear up in there. I'm going into a nice green area of. Western Nevada, Eastern California. I'm actually somewhere near Lake Tahoe right now. So, uh, yeah. So vegetation spawns up. That is not Lake Tahoe. What? Where? Where am I head? Let's see. I can use the uh, nav map. Oh, okay. It's beyond this lake. So, yeah. This is GeoFS 3.0. It does look a lot more beautiful. The uh, lighting is also uh, a bit more realistic, too. So if I advance the day, you notice it seems to get kind of darker. Oh, 
You see the uh, sort of realistic uh, lighting going on there. What if I? Ooh. Oh. Okay, this part is completely unrehearsed. Let me be clear about. Wait, a cockpit lights up? I didn't realize that. You gotta forgive me, I don't do uh, night flying very often. Actually, I see a runway. I think I'm gonna land there, and then I think that's gonna go ahead and uh, do it for this video, Deal Flight Simulator. I've uh, kept you too long. <clears throat> So yeah, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm thinking of doing these kinds of videos in the foreseeable future for Space Month. I'll have other content available, so don't worry about that. And, oh. No! <laughs> Dang it! Better <laughs> stopped again! This, this is a problem that I run into a bit often with 3.0, so frankly, I'm not going to be uh, using this version often in my, in my foreseeable GeoFS videos. <sighs> what can else, what else can I say about this glitch? Not much, really. Well, let's see, here's a nice black screen. I'm frozen in time, and I was so close to landing at that runway, too. Dang it. Anyway, yes. Uh, that does it for this video. Uh, there'll be more explanation videos for DLFS going forward in the foreseeable future. I will have other uh, content here and there on my channel. So if you're interested in stuff other than Geo Flight Simulator, I do some gaming stuff here as well. Yeah, I think that's everything. So that's going to go ahead and uh, conclude this video. So I am Space Bun. I, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you all next time. Sierra Bravo 717 checking out.